Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore back once again to continue our discussion on Python programming. Today we're going to look at user-defined functions, your own functions that you can build and call. And if you want, you can collect them up and put them in your own modules. You know, just like the math module, the random module, you can make your own. All right. First things first. New keyword, def, define. So let's think in terms of a, a simple function we might use. Granted, this is perhaps a little contrived, but just enough to illustrate. I'm going to create a little function called my average. It's going to take two variables. I'm just going to call them A and B. What does it do? Well, it literally just adds the two things together and, you know, divides by two. So I'm going to say C gets A plus B divided by 2. Now somewhere in my code, I'm going to call this my average function, just like I would call, you know, sine or log 10 or a random, you know, something like that. Um, so this function needs to return a value. In this case, it's just going to return C. That's my function. That's all it does. It takes two arguments, A and B, adds them together, divides by two, returns the value. Now, these two lines could actually be combined. We don't really need the C variable, but I'm doing this on purpose. You could just say return A plus B divided by two. Now, here's my main bit of code. My main bit of code is just going to call this with a couple numbers, and then we're going to print out the result. Okay. All right. I'll do this in a couple of separate lines. I'll just say X gets my average and I'll just say, you know, 12 and 34. Okay. Something like that. I'll print out X. All right. Fairly straightforward. First thing I have to tell you about this main body of code is that this call must occur after the definition. In other words, if you stuck this definition down here somewhere, when Python would come in and see my average, it wouldn't know what it is. It has to see the definition before you actually use it. So if you're not going to put this in a module, and we're not going to talk about how to do that today, but if you're not going to do that, then you have to make sure that these are defined before the main body of the code. And once again, notice the indent on here, right? That's how you know this is the main body and this is the function, just like it was with if statements, just like it was with while loops and for loops. You have to have this indent. All right, let's run this. All right, 23. Yeah, 23 is the average of 12 and 34. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Now, this set of variables, a, b. These are referred to as local variables, right? a, b, and c are local to this. They're not the same as a similarly named variable in your main program. Let's prove the point. So here's my main program. I'm going to say a is 1. And down here, I'm going to print, after I call my average, a and X. Okay, but I'm also up here inside the definition of my new function, I'm going to print A. So again, my main program starts here. This is my main program. First thing it does, there's a variable called A, put a 1 in there, and we call my average with the numbers 12 and 34. Now those are basically copied into these local variables called a and b. a is 12, b is 34. So when I print a, this should print out the 12. We do the computation with 12. You know, we saw that that's what happened over here. But when we come back down here, this a is this a. We're not in the function, we're in the main body. All right? So this a is not the same as this a. Two different variables, same name. Don't let that freak you out because you can have two friends named Kelsey 
And, you know, they're two different people, right? One is a person you grew up uh, next door to, and the other is a person you went to college with who lives in New Zealand, okay? Two different people named Kelsley. Two, two different variables named A. All right, let's check this out. Okay, so this 12 right here is when we went through and called my average. That's this, the local variable 12 that we passed. Okay, got the return value, x, print out a, but that's this a, there's the one, and there's our 23 for the average, right? Okay, pretty good so far, hopefully. You know, and you might ask, well, why? Why is why is this d done this way? Because, I mean, these are copies and so forth. Why isn't there just one A? This is actually a really good thing. Because otherwise, in a big program, every single variable would have to have a unique name. And think what a pain that would be. You know, you write up a, a, a function, and you have to make sure that these variable names would never be used in the name in the main body. Wow, that's crazy. All right, so this way, these names are local. They're only known in here. Okay. All right, so we can get rid of that. All right, clean slate. Time to look at something a little bit different. And that is, I'm going to make a new function here. We're going to call this one bigger first. This is actually going to return more than one variable. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this sequence. Right? If A is greater than B, we are going to return this pair of values, right? A and B. Else, we're going to return The reverse, BA. Now, our main bit of code, we're going to call this bigger first. So, we need two values for the return. And let's put in our old 12 and 34. And we'll print them out. Okay, bigger first, 3412. What if we change this to 112? All right, so that should keep the order rather than flipping it. And it does. All right. So in your function, you can have ifs, obviously. You can have input statements, print statements, uh, for loops, while loops, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Just remember that the definition has to be before you use it, right? Before the main body of code. So I can have multiple functions in here, but I got to have them before the main body of the code. Okay. So kind of separate that out. Think functions, 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 then the main body of code. Otherwise you can take all these, put them in a library or a module and then import them like we would with math or so forth. Okay? All right, we're going to look at this in some other um, discussions in the future. Experiment with it. Have fun.